So this is the grave of Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib at the back. And also we have the grave of Abdullah ibn Jahl, the leader of the archers, and Musa bin Umay, that is in the front. So over here, uh, we see the grave of Abdullah ibn Jahl, that one in the middle, and then uh, this one over here is the grave of Musa bin Umay. And then in the back, this is the grave of uh, Hamza the Sea, the Shuhada, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his peace and blessings upon all of them. Of course, in the background, we have the mountain of Wahid over here. And when you turn around on this way, you will see the Jabal of Umar, the Jabal al Ainay, which is the uh, the mountain where the 40 archers, they stood uh, and they defended the, the Muslims and they defended the Prophet Sallallahu the 50 archers, excuse me. And then of course, as we know, 40 of them, they uh, they uh, went down. And because uh, of uh, what they saw happening in the battlefield, and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala forgave them, as Allah says, وَلَقَدْ عَفَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala grant them and all of us in Mecca for those. I'm just going to very quickly uh, climb up the mountain to show you how uh, easy it is. Of course, over the course of the last 1,400 years, obviously, this mountain, its size has diminished immensely. Uh, we can assume that at least this mountain would be at least three to four times higher than it is right now. Uh, and that is because as you can tell, everybody goes up and down it. So obviously uh, it's going to be uh, eroded by the people climbing up and down. So we're just going to very quickly climb up this mountain. And of course, I mean, it must be said that this is a historic site. I mean, we, if we come here, we think of the history. There's no blessings per se. We don't pray to rak'ah. There's no special dua that is to be accepted here. But still, it is a very historic uh, site. And it is a site that we should learn from. And we should think about the mor morals that the Battle of Uhud teaches us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us with those Sahaba and with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's a very easy climb because of obviously all of the people that have done it. And we can assume in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it would have been a more proper mountain, if you like, a more rugged uh, mountain. So when we get to the top, we will have a better view of where Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam camped and also where the Quraysh camped as well. So we are now basically at the top. You see how fast that was. I'm at the top of the mountain right now. <clears throat> now, if you see over here, so let me give you the full view. So this is the mountain of Uhud. This is the mountain of Uhud over here. All of this is the mountain of Uhud over here. The Prophet ﷺ camped basically where this masjid is. That's roughly where the camp was. There we see the grave. Excuse me. There we see the grave of Hamza radiallahu an at the top over there. And also Mus'hab ibn Umair and Abdullah ibn Jahsh. And if you look carefully as well, over here, let me see if I can zoom in for you. If you look very carefully, you will see over there the crevice that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used. If I can zoom in, excuse me. There we go, okay. If you look carefully, between the two light poles, the one, uh, <coughs> this light pole and this light pole, between these two light poles, you will find that crevice over there. It is that crevice that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam stayed in and sought protection uh, from. This is where the Quraysh camp, where the date palms are. This is where the Quraysh camp. And Khalid and Walid, when he saw the 40 archers uh, flee, when he saw the 40 archers flee, he utilized um, that by basically coming down. Uh, those times, this land would have been much more uh, 
if you like, on inclined than it is now. So this area right now, this is where Khalid would have utilized to go down and behind the mountain and to then come back from behind the mountain and then launch the surprise attack on the Muslims who are basically here where the mosque is. So where the mosque is, this is where uh, Khalid bin Walid would have attacked from the back. You see the mosque over here. And the Prophet Sallallahu was the first to see Khalid as we said. And he then, uh, he was basically in the front of the mosque over there. And he then, after he warned the Muslims, he then fled and he sought protection from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, obviously, but using the physical means. And this shows us the real meaning of tawakkul as well. Tawakkul doesn't just mean that you sit and you say, Allah will protect me. Tawakkul means exactly as the Prophet Sallallahu did, which means he wore armor, he utilized the battle plan, he chose the best planes for Uhud, he had a technique that caused the Muslims to win in the beginning, and yet when all did not work in the end, there was no problem, there was no qualms, there's nothing wrong with then literally seeking protection and running away to a safe place. There is nothing wrong with this that is a part of the true tawakkul in Allah. And of course, our Prophet system was calm throughout all of this and he made dua to Allah even as the uh, Quraysh were uh, attacking him and he put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once again, this is now the entire plains of the year. Thank you.